computer. Namaste and welcome everyone to our Tuesday evening yoga session. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like there is not too much load shedding, ha shedding, shedding happening. And I haven't even drunk anything today um, in Cape Town. So um, nice to see <laughs> participants. Today we're going to look at a little bit of um, backbend movements and really just gentle ways of integrating and working with with backbends because backbends can be a bit stimulating so it's not really what you want to be doing at night um, in a sense but what is really nice with the backbends as well is they they work nicely into your adrenal gland so above your kidneys you've got your little adrenal glands and when you are doing backbends you're just gently kind of like squeezing into them and then like opening them up so you're kind of thinking of like massaging those little glands and remember kind of like your adrenals they are what release cortisol the stress hormone that sends you off into fight and flight so you really if you have a lot of stress in or fear based anxiety in your life you really do want to be looking at your adrenals and making sure that your adrenal glands stay healthy and well functioning so the back bends are nice postures that really can if you do them really nice and gently you can just help to massage and maybe release a little bit of kind of tension that is sitting there and just get them to get the energy to move in and out there a little better all right so i invite you to come to your mats you can sit in really whichever way it works for you as long as you feel comfortable and maybe change the cross of your leg to how you would normally naturally go into it so that there's a little bit of a change. And then you can close your eyes. And you can observe your breath. So noticing the smooth inhalation and the soft exhalation. And as you take each breath, you might notice how the inhalations start to get smoother and smoother and smoother and how the exhalations slowly start to get longer and longer and longer. And you might even notice how I move into that softer J breath in the back of the throat, listening to that soft rasping sound. And then slowly slide your attention down your spine and into kind of like that mid back region, trying to visualize your little kidneys in that space. Right side, left side, if you have to. Just imagine a little clump above each of the kidneys, those little adrenal glands. Just imagine sending a big hug, a big squeeze, lots of love to your kidneys and your adrenal glands for everything that they do. Just sending a sensation or a sense of gratitude to them. And you're going to allow them to, you're going to invite them maybe to relax tonight. Saying that you're going to take control for them and that you're going to be doing a couple of movements that are going to be nice and nourishing and nurturing to them. And bringing back balance. Maybe just visualizing the lovely emerald green, the lovely nurturing, loving color in that space, a healing color for them. And as the color comes up naturally, allow that to fill. It might be a blue or a purple, red. 
the healing dream, there's always a lovely easy kind of to focus on the work. And then bring the palms of your hands together, get your hands really nice and warm. Come in wherever your eyes, take a deep breath, breath in and out. And let's do that again. I'll bring the palms of the hands together, get the hands really nice and warm. Cup them over your eyes. This time look into the darkness, allow the warmth to penetrate your eyes, gently re-energizing them. But any stress, any tension from the day can be released in your eyes. Blink the eyes a few times if you miss the light. You might be looking out of a window in the distance or a pretty picture. And then take yourself straight into shoulder circles. So we're going to inhale as we draw the shoulders up and back and exhale down and around. And take it a little bit into body movement as well. So we're not going to keep the body still. We're actually just going to invite the body to, to move as well as you work with the shoulders. And then change direction, circling the shoulders the other way, maybe just rocking the body back and forth as well. So there's more movement than just into those shoulders. Good. And then see if you can maybe swing or slide your chest a little from side to side without it being uncomfortable, without being forceful. And noticing that there's movement happening in the waist as you kind of draw that chest from side to side. We're not doing it to any kind of breath grade, we're just warming up the body a little. And then from here, we're going to circle the torso. So going forwards to the side, back. You can hold onto your feet or your shins if you want. And then see if you can make that circle a little bit slower and a little bit deeper. And then change direction, circling the other way. And your spiral movements are also always so lovely to just bring nourishment to the spine, to the body. Maybe two more, you might be noticing a few little cracks or creaks. And last one, bring yourself back to the center. And let's extend those legs up. Give them a little bit of a shake and you can support yourself with your hands behind you, circling the feet working into the ankles. Bend the knees as well. So that you're working right up into your knees and hips this evening. Change direction, circle it the other way. And then point and flex. You might notice that you want to yawn now that you're opening up, comes up from your chest. We were chatting about that in that fascia workshop of Lana. As soon as you start releasing fascia, especially in the front of your chest, and often makes you want to, to yawn. So never holding any urges in. So if you ever want to yawn or fart or burp or anything like that, you want to be able to release that energy from your system. Spread your toes wide. Scrunch them up. Spread them wide. Scrunch them up. Once more spreading wide and scrunching up. Good. All right, shake out the hands, maybe interlock the fingers and do a little figure of eights with the hands, warming up into the wrists. We're going to be coming onto all fours. You might just want to rotate the wrists the other way. There we go. And give them a good shake. Super. All right, so if you're brave, the socks can come off. <laughs> You can slip your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. We're going to take it into a nice slow cat stretch. So as you inhale, you're going to be 
Opening up as you exhale, tuck under the tailbone, you need to do rounding the spine. One little vertebra at a time, not that the vertebra can actually move like that, but that's what we're doing. And then as you inhale, lift from your tailbone first, release through the lower back, the mid back, the upper back, and then let your head and neck lift last. Right, so we're continuing with a few more rounds of the cat stretch. If you're wearing a very thick jersey, you might want to take that off. Okay. A few more rounds here. Noticing how the spine feels. And then we're going to do a slightly different movement where we're going to come into um, a, a softened kind of a back position. We're going to bring the um, left hip towards the left and then we take the buttocks over to the right. So we're just kind of like going to swing the hips from side to side. So I know it's a little bit difficult to see with me on a blue mat and black pants and the black top, but you're just kind of like swinging the buttocks from side to side. And what we're going to do now is we're going to combine those movements. So from your cap stretch, you need to take your hips over to the right. Then you're going to be rounding your spine like your cap stretch. You need to take your hips over to the left. And then you're going to kind of like arch again and up over to the right. And then you're taking yourself up, around. And then over to the left, you can bend your elbows here so you can get like into a little bit of a deep cat stretch. So what you're actually doing, you're imagining that your spine is a skipping rope, like a jump rope. And as you come down, kind of like it's that lowest position. And then as you lift up, it's kind of like that rope is going up over you. Right, so you're creating like a little bit of a, a skipping rope um, look with what you're doing and you can really bend into those elbows to get deep down not a traditional yoga posture at all but it is a really nice way of warming up and getting into the body and you can already feel how you're just gently squeezing and working into the kidneys into those adrenal glands and then you're going to change direction you're going to do the same movement the other way you're just kind of changing the direction that your skipping rope is moving in. And you can bend those elbows to get nice and low, and you're really rounding your back to get nice and high. Make it so that it's comfortable for you. You don't want it to be uncomfortable for your spine. What we're wanting to do is just really warm up into our, our backs and to get comfortable before we go into any deeper form of back bend. Great, back to the center. And then just one or two normal cat stretches. And then from here, we need to take ourselves into Mandukasana, the front big toes come together. Buttocks comes to the heels, knees come apart. Start off by having your hands under your forehead. And soften and release into here, relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. That's it. A little bit of a side squeeze. So we're going to walk the hands over to the right side and the body over to the right side. To just come a little bit further away from the wall. So we're just walking the hands and the body over to the right side. There we go. You can cup your hands the other way, rest your forehead in your hands. You can make fists of your hands. You can use a block um, to place your head on whatever works for you as long as you're comfortable. And 
then you'll notice that there's a little bit of squeezing into the right and then opening and lengthening into the left side. Stay here, hold into it, breathe, breathe, breathe. Lovely. And then as you inhale, bring yourself back to the centre, take a moment to observe. Maybe noticing if there's a side that feels more open, more light, more free. And then walk your torso over to the other side and settle into it here. Noticing there's a little bit of a squeeze in the left side, opening through the right, work this one, opening right up into that right armpit, into that chest bust area. So that you can release the weight back and down into the buttocks. If you need your hands um, on fists or on a block, you can do that. Again, you want to make sure that it's enjoyable and that it works for you. And then coming back to the center, reaching those arms out. Here we're going to transition down until our tummy. So you can bring the weight forward a little, bring the knees in, and then very elegantly just kind of lie on the abdomen. Slip the hands under the forehead, turn the toes in, heels out, and relax. As you lie here, as you rest in this position, take three deep breaths into the belly. So as you inhale, actively press the belly into the mat. As you exhale, let go. And again, inhaling. And exhaling, releasing. Last time, breathing in fully and deeply. Exhale, let it go. Super. The legs go straight back. You can have them together if that's comfortable. If you prefer to have them a little apart, that's absolutely fine. You need to think of lengthening through those legs, pressing down through the top of the feet. You're really going to think of um, pressing, it's as if you want to try and press your toenails down into the mats as well. So they really are nice and active. We're going to start by keeping the right hand under the forehead and you're going to swoop your left arm behind you. And you're going to place your left hand, the palm up, and the back of the hand resting on your lower back. So we're going to allow that hand to rest in that position. The left, the, the forehead is resting on your hand. We're going to start off by inhaling. Pressing the toes down into the mat, the nails down into the mat, toenails into the mat, and you need to be lifting just the head. And as you exhale, you need to release your head back down. We're doing that twice more. As you inhale, you're pressing your hips into the mat, you're lengthening through the legs, you're pressing the toenails down into the mat. And as you exhale, you're lowering. And last time. And exhaling, lowering. Good. This time you need to keep your right hand and your forehead in contact. So as you inhale, you're going to lift your head, your right hand, and maybe even the chest a little. Your, low, your left hand is resting on your low back, and you can really feel that you're going to keep to a length there. As you exhale, you come down. It's reminding you to work the pubic bone to the mat. So as you inhale, you're coming up, you're making sure the lower back stays long. You don't want to scrunch into the lower back. Exhaling, releasing one last round like this. Inhaling, pressing the pelvis into the mat, lengthening through the legs, toes into the mat. Nice long lower back. Exhale and drift. Good. Release your left hand as it comes forward. 
Take a breath or two, soften the feet, notice how you feel. And then we do the same thing on the other side. So the legs go straight back. Right hand swoops behind you, resting your hand, your head on your left hand. Inhale, lifting just the head. Noticing how the chest opens. Exhale, releasing. And again, inhaling as you lift and open. And exhale as you come down. The last time like this. Next three, you're lifting with your hand. So as you inhale, head and hand lift. The exhalation brings you down slowly, slowly, slowly with control. So what you should be knowing is that there is a very slight squeezing into the area of your kidneys as you come up, working into those adrenal glands. There's nothing hard, forceful, strong. It's a gentle massaging movement with this dynamic movement. As you exhale, release, release that right hand as well. Slip the hands alongside your chest. Inhale, come up. Exhale, press back into that child's pose. If you prefer, uh, if into your frog, if you prefer a child's pose, by all means, take yourself into a child's pose instead. If you do not enjoy being in a child's pose or forward, you just come up onto your knees. And you can be sitting into your Adjust in that position. There we go. Whichever pose you're in, you're taking a couple of breaths. Noticing the balance, noticing how the lower back feels. And then from here, we're going to come forward to the back, come to our tumblers. Right. So we were working with one hand on our back. This time we're going to change that position. We're going to extend the right arm out in front of us and we're going to keep the left hand under the forehead. From here, as you inhale, you're going to be lifting just your right arm and your left leg. So it's going to be a diagonal lift. Right arm, left leg. Exhale, they come down. We're doing two more like that. Inhaling, right arm and left leg lift. And use your whole exhalation to lower back down. So see if you can feel that lovely diagonal extension from right fingertip to left toe. That's it. And we do three more. The only part that's going to stay in contact with the mat is the right leg. So we need to inhale, right arm, left arm, head, and left leg. And exhale, coming down. And obviously the pelvis in the abdomen will be in contact with the mat as well. Inhaling, in other words, the only limb that is on the mat is going to be your right leg. Last time, inhale as you lift. Exhale as you rise. So we're starting to build a little bit of strength, a little bit of heat. Toes and heels out. Relax into the lower back. Notice how you feel. So these are all little variations of Bhujangasana, the Cobra, and Salabhasana, the Locust. Gentle ways we can work with them. Right. Legs go straight back. Other side, left arm goes in front of you. Inhaling, left arm, right leg lift. It doesn't have to be a high lift, a small little lift is absolutely fine. You take a whole exhalation to lower back down. Rather make it small and controlled than too big and too large. We want to be just doing a gentle squeeze, a gentle massage into those kidneys, into those adrenals. We don't want to be forcing or pushing or going too far. After that last one, we need to go further, inhaling, left arm, right arm, 
cake, right leg lifts, left leg is rooted, grounded. Exhalation brings you back down. The inhalation brings us up. The exhalation brings you down. Last time. Releasing out of it. Slip the hands alongside the chest. Inhale, push yourself up. Exhale, push back into, again, one of your three resting positions, a nice neutral position. A bit of a forward bend for the body. So either your frog, your child's pose, or just sitting up. Again, you want to notice how how you feel. Okay. Great. All right. So from wherever you are, come back onto your knees for a moment. From here, take it into a few cats. Stretches where you're just sitting. If it doesn't work, you can come up onto your normal, onto hand, or fours, in other words, hands and knees, and do cat stretches that way. Really focus on the rounding, the exhalation, the inhalation. Feel that the chest is opening. Don't feel that you need to arch too much. Exhale, really getting back into yourself. Last time. Lovely. All right, so we've really been working nicely into working a little bit into the shoulders, into different positions of the shoulders, working into warming up into the lower back. And we need to come down to mat one last time and see if we can go just a little bit deeper this evening. Let's see how it goes. When you're really coming back onto that mat, I'm going to invite you to bend your right knee. Flex into the right foot. You can keep your hands under your forehead. As you flex into your right foot, you're going to press the hip bones into the mat. You're going to press the left foot into the mat. And on an inhalation, you're going to try and lift your right thigh just a few millimeters or a centimeter or two off the mat. And as you exhale, you're going to slowly, slowly, slowly place that right thigh back down. So it feels as if you're pushing the ceiling up with your right foot. And exhaling down. One more round as you inhale, you're pushing the ceiling up with your right foot. Keeping your right hip bone on the mat. That right hip bone stays down. You're not lifting your right hip bone to that. Exhaling, bringing that thigh back down. From here, you're going to bend your right knee. You're going to swoop your right arm behind you. And this time, instead of bringing your hand to your back, you're going to see if you can grab hold of your ankle. You can use a strap if you can't grab hold of your ankle. And all we're doing is we're working the right heel towards the buttock. We're going to be pressing the pubic bone, the pelvis down into the mat. The left leg is extending and down into the mat as well. Folding it here, three slow breaths. Feel a lovely opening through that right thigh, the front of that right thigh. So I'm going to withdraw and place. And what we're going to be doing after those three breaths is you need to extend your left arm out in front of you. And as you inhale, you're going to lift your left arm, your head, and just gently you're going to lift your right thigh. And you're going to kick that right foot back, like you had when you were flexing the foot um, and pushing it up towards the seat. Similar kind of movement. And exhaling, hand comes down, head comes down, heel comes towards the back. Inhale, flex the foot, lifting the arm, lifting the head, lifting the chest. The thigh can come up as well. 
exhaling, coming down. All those movements happen at the same time. We're doing that one last time, inhaling as we lift up. This time, you're going to see if you can stay here. You're going to hold it for three rounds of breathing as you lengthen through your left leg, pressing, clicking those nails, toenails down into the mat. Allow your body to move with your breath. And on your third exhalation, slowly release, releasing the forehead, the arm, the leg. Extend both arms out in front of you. Toes and heels out, soften into the elbows. And allow your body to relax. Good. Right hand comes under the forehead this time. Swoop your left arm behind you. Grab hold of your ankle. There we go. All right, so you're lengthening through that right leg. We're going to flex through the left foot. And so if you're not holding onto the ankle, if you can keep your bring your left hand under your forehead one, one step ahead here. As you inhale, we are just lifting, sorry, that left thigh up. Exhaling, bringing the left thigh back down. Three rounds like that. Inhaling as you lift just the thigh, lengthening through the right leg this time. Pelvis and hips stay on the ground. It's a small, small movement. We're going for it small and contained if you will. Good. Now, after that third one, you can take the same arm as leg behind you. You can grab hold of the ankle and you can now work the heel towards the buttocks. Breathing through the left quadricep, the front of that left leg. Notice if you tend to kind of like collapse into yourself. So if that happens, you feel that you can lengthen through the right leg, lengthen through your left quad into the knee, hip bones are even, you can extend your right arm out in front of you now, foreheads to the mat, three rounds dynamically, inhale as your right arm lifts, head lifts, flex your foot, feel as if you're kicking that leg back, right leg strong, exhale as you come back down. Inhale as you open and lift. Exhale as you release. Last time, breathing in as you lift up. Stay here, hold, breathe into it. And again, letting go, releasing. Release your right arm, your left arm, your leg. Slip your hands alongside your chest. Push up. And this time, see if you can take yourself into a downward facing dog. If that doesn't feel right, do whatever does feel right. But cycle into those legs a little. Get the sitting bones nice and high. Work the rib cage towards your thighs. Let the head relax and hang. Again, often most of the day, we're always upright. So now we're just reversing the energy in those kidneys, in those adrenal glands. You can hold the posture for two or three rounds of breathing for a moment. And then when you're ready, coming back down onto your knees. Then you can come off those little hands. You can give them a bit of a circle, rotating into them. Just double checking the time. There we go. Circling them the other way. Flicking the fingers. Lovely. Right. So, uh, a nice little posture to work with because we've got a little bit of extra time. 
is Ustrasana, the camel pose. What we're going to do is just very simply, very easily kind of like allow ourselves to open up and to rest in that. The whole body has been opened up beautifully for working into a back bend. So it should feel quite comfortable. For those who would like to use their hard blocks, you can grab the tips towards them, find them. Right. If you don't have hard blocks, you don't need them, it really doesn't matter. We're going to start off by slipping the hands into the lower back. We're going to press down through the shins and the top of the feet. As you inhale, you're pressing the shins down, chest lift, squeeze the elbows together, just opening up and opening up into the throat and the chest. So you're not dropping the head back, but you're just lifting and lengthening. And as you exhale, bring yourself back to neutral, bring the chin into the throat, looking down, so squeezing into the throat. As you inhale, taking the hips forward, noticing the butt sticks engaging. Allow that engagement to take place. Let the sternum rise up, opening your gaze, looking up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, bring yourself back to neutral. So we're just allowing the inhalation to open us up a little. And the exhalation to close. Just working with that natural pulsation of the inhalation, of the exhalation, of the expansion, of the contraction, the growing, of the shrinking. And if this is quite comfortable, if you're enjoying the dynamic movement and you'd like to continue, do so. Sometimes it really feels good for the back. If you feel you'd actually like to hold your posture for a moment, you can do so. All you need to do is maybe tuck under the toes, open the chest, and crawl yourself back. If you feel that you are open through the quadriceps, if you feel that you can keep the length in your back and you'd like to take yourself deeper into a back, you can use your hard blocks. You can grab hold of your ankles if that feels right. All you want to do is you want to make sure you're not scrunching. I don't even want to pretend or try and do that because it will feel so terrible. But you don't want to be scrunching into your lower back. You want to try and keep a nice smooth curve. Sorry, my top is bunching, so you're not able to see. But you really want to have a nice, smooth, even curve through the back. And again, if going too far back is right for you, keep yourself supported and opened up that way. The heart center is open. We're working with that lovely emerald green color. You can imagine that spreading back into those kidneys and your adrenal glands. And then coming back to neutral and back to the center, taking the buttocks to your heels. Right. We're going to take a little bit of a moment. So your Ustrasana, your Kamal pose does take into quite a strong back. So you don't want to go straight flat into a strong full bend. You do want to kind of allow your body to navigate out of it with ease. So that may mean doing a few rounds of just like a little bit of a cat stretch here. So that you can already feel what it feels like to draw your navel towards the spine. And then from there, you can take yourself forward. And you might just want to use again, if you've got your brick to slip them underneath your head. So start high. And you take a breath or two here. And you allow your body to relax. And then you may want to lower the brick to the next level, the block to the next level. And you take another breath or two here. And when you're ready, you may want to lower another level. And you may just want to stay in that position, and you might want to release right down to the mat now. See what works. What's quite nice is to have 
the thighs, putting pressure into the abdomen and the chest. If your breasts are feeling sensitive, if you're feeling that there's too much pressure in the pelvic area, the lower abdomen, the womb area, then you don't feel as low down, or you can always spread your knees a little. And then you may slowly exhale. And then back up. Take a breath or two here. And then release. Lovely. If you want to put on socks or anything like that, you can do so. We're going to Get ready for a little bit of a pranayama practice. And then from there, we'll take ourselves into relaxation. I'm going to come a little closer to the screen for our pranayama practice today. What we're going to do very simply, very easily, not too complicated. We haven't done it in a while, but um, it is a lovely practice, is the step breath. So what you want to be doing with your step breath is Let's break the inhalation and the exhalation into three parts. So you're going to be inhaling a third, pausing, inhaling another third, pausing, inhaling the final third, pausing. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to exhale for a third, pause, exhale the second third of your breath, pause, exhale completely, pause, and then again, inhale, 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 exhale, Exhale, exhale. So one inhalation is broken up into three equal parts and the exhalation is broken up into three equal parts as well. We're not exhaling between the parts or inhaling between the parts. It's all happening with that one inhalation and it's all happening with that one exhalation. All right, so we're ready. We're ready to do just three rounds of that today. Sitting nice and tall. And when you're ready, exhaling completely and then start with the inhalation. So we inhale, one, two, pause. Inhale, three, four, pause. Inhale, five, six, pause. And then exhale, one, two, pause. Exhale, three, four, pause. Exhale, five, six, pause, and then do the same. I'll be quiet now and you can do two more rounds in your own time. Let's do one last round. After your last step breath round, allow a natural breath to return. And then from here, we'll make ourselves comfortable for relaxation. So if you have to take off your jersey, go ahead, grab that, put that on. Um, if you need a pillow underneath your head, place a pillow underneath your head, bolster under your knees, eye bag over your eyes, whatever it is to get comfortable, go make yourself comfortable on your mat. Um, we did do quite a lot of back bending work. So when you're on your mat, if you feel you need to do a few 
pelvic tilts, a few apanasanas, anything like that. If you're finding that there are a little kind of few tweaks or twiddles in the back, do that. You might even feel that it'll be more comfortable for your back to have your knees bent, fully bent in relaxation. You be the decision maker for yourself. Okay, when you get to your mat, you're going to start off by allowing your body to obviously settle into the ground and then let your head just roll a little from side to side, releasing any tension from the back. And then bring your head back to the center. Make tight fist of your hands, reach your hands down towards your feet. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, relax and release. Flex the feet, tighten the thighs, tighten the buttocks, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And as you exhale, relax and release. Inhale deeply, allow your whole body to expand. And as you exhale, let it go. Inhale deeply, allow your body to expand. And exhale, let it go. Last time, breathing in deeply. And letting the breath go completely. Allow the body and the breath to settle. Allow your physical body to release. Draw attention down to the legs and invite the legs to relax. Draw your attention to your torso and invite your torso to relax. I invite your attention to your arms, the hands, and then as your attention settles there, invite those areas to relax. And draw your attention to your face and your head, and invite your head and your neck head and the neck to relax a little bit more. And your whole body is soft and relaxed. You have a sense of ease, a sense of stillness. Maybe a lovely sense of lightness within. And slowly shift your attention down into your kidneys. Your right and your left kidney. And maybe just drawing that awareness to that adrenal gland that sit above your kidney. And then notice any feelings or sensations in those areas. Are they feeling a little stimulated, a little wired? Are they feeling relaxed? Are they feeling a little detoxed? Again, there's no wrong sensation. You're just going deep into the kidneys and you're asking them, how do you feel? And you might even notice that your right kidney feels different to the left. And as you intuitively listen to what is arising and there may be sensations, feelings, words, colors arising, which is all fine. Or there may be nothing arising, which is also absolutely fine. 
We're just going to try and imagine a, a big green light surrounding you. I'm going to imagine that green light filling them with love, with compassion, and with a sense of healing. We all live in such an overstimulated world environment. All our kidneys are a little out of balance, so take some time to send them love, to send them a little bit of balance and ease. A little bit of green healing light will do them wonders. Feel how they can just soak up in that light. And in that space, in that same sound, the kidneys and those adrenal glands beautifully relax and at ease. You may even want to ask them. Is there something I should know? Is there something I should hear? Is there something I should know? Just notice what arises. Maybe they are wanting more attention. Maybe they are wanting you to slow down. Maybe they are wanting you to step back. Maybe they're wanting more hydration. Maybe they're wanting you to take action. You need to be quiet for a moment and you will need to just contemplate your kidneys, that green light around them, and just ask them, what should I know? What are you ready to share? Acknowledging them again, sending your gratitude, thanks, and slowly release the color, the image, any sensations. And you can bring that attention to your heart center where you breathe a little more deeply, noticing the rise and the fall of the chest. Allow the thumbs to move along your fingertips, waking up your hands and even your toes, waking up your feet. And when you're ready, stretch your arms out behind you, yawning if you want to. Stretch in diagonally through the body, right arm and left leg, left arm and right leg. Arms on my legs, ever take a nice deep breath in and then let them go. Bring your knees to your chest, give them a good squeeze. If you need to rock a little from side to side, go ahead and do so. Eventually, you just roll all the way onto your right side, staying there for a moment. Give your body a chance to readjust, locking in any energy. And then placing your left hand in front of your chest, push into that hand, come all the way up into a seated position. And then from there, we will close our eyes. As you sit there, you can end with your three arms. You can take a moment to give thanks for three things you're grateful for. You can just take three slow, deep breaths. So we'll do that together now. And 
maybe you can bring your hands to your heart center. Take a moment to nod your head and just acknowledge the amazing human being that you are. And then when you are ready, you can open your eyes and you can lift your gaze again. Namaste and have a beautiful, beautiful evening. Thank you for joining in the practice.